Welcome to the English episode number four in his own language. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the Bible and the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon being another testament of Christ. But before we get that far, we would like to invite you to join us in the chat room, and you're probably already in there if you see this. But if you're coming in and watching our recording during the week, please join us uh, on Tuesdays uh, around this time at 10.30 American Utah time. Uh, and join us in the chat room, write to us, share something, um, some experiences, or just like us. And that leads us to Facebook. We are actually also in there. Join our group in his own language. Like us, write to us, or share with us whatever you would like to. We have people all over the world writing to us constantly and sharing a lot of their testimonies and stories, their gratitude for the show, and, and a lot of their feelings. So please be very much interested. So, But as I said, uh, this is the fourth episode, and you probably noticed if you've seen the other English episodes that I'm here, but Morgan looks different. And uh, that bit. is because he's not here, and it's actually another person that's here. <laughs> and uh, I will give the time over to you, Dane. I'm not a Morgan, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is true. You've probably seen him before if you go to the Dana show, mm -hmm. so don't let that confuse you. Yep, I am Dane Christensen. I'm here filling in for Morgan. He's out of town. Um, I guess you would like to know a little bit about me, so I'm not just a total stranger. I'm from Utah, from Salt Lake City. I study at BYU, Univer uh, Brigham, Young, Brigham Young University. Um, I'm a communications major. Um, I recently just got married. That's always a good thing to mention. I'm a newlywed. Um, that's always great. I, it's better than being single, I'll tell you that. And just what we've said, uh, actually, also on the Danish show, it still counts in the English show that we're actually related. Oh, I guess I should mention that. I don't yeah. know how far you wanted to go in. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but since you said married and yeah, all my, that. Yeah, my mother is from Denmark. Tia is obviously from Denmark. I don't know. But, uh, no, is I don't that know. obviously uh, on the English show? You're, you're, uh, that's true. Anyways, from, da from the Danish show. But not the fact that we're from Denmark, but the fact is that make his mother and me, we're sisters. Tia is my aunt, yes. yes. That is true. Um, and another tidbit is I did serve a mission. Yes, and I served in the... The very blessed place, Denmark. So The best place in the world. The little kingdom of Denmark. Can't complain. No. <laughs> anyway, so that's a little bit about you, Dane. A little bit about me. I think people can trust me now in what they I can, say. And if not, you can always go to the first episode in Danish and practice your gift of tongues. Because then he will tell you a little more there from the old episodes <laughs> of where you are. And it's, it is without subtitles. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, as we said, let's begin. We have a, a, a very interesting topic today, uh, mm. the Bible and the Book of Mormon, another testament of Christ. So but, but before we begin talking about the Book of Mormon, let's talk a little bit about the Bible. A little bit about uh, the Bible. Yes. A good place to start. It is, isn't it? What is the Bible? The Bible is like a journal, Taya. It's a record of what people have written down a yeah. long time ago. Yes, because I was end. just going to ask you, like from yesterday or, you know, or... Anyway, so we're talking about the time period before Christ walked the earth and the uh -huh. time period after he walked on earth. Yeah. But not dating all the way up to our time. No. No, we're still talking about ancient times. Very much ancient times. Yeah. And that with these ancient peoples around in the Middle East, around the Mediterranean Sea, that we get these records from these people. They yeah. had written them down, and it was the prophets, it was the apostles, it was um, the disciples of Christ that had written down their stories, their yeah. revelations and things. Their revelations, their beliefs, their trials. Their trials. Their problems. Their, their uh, genealogy, even. Yes, even so, that. Sometimes we have chapters that just talks about who, who begat who. Who begat who, and, <laughs> and meth began who. <laughs> So this was actually, we could call it, as we said, a journal. Yeah. Even though we, it's, it's a holy journal, it's still a journal. There's it's some history that has nothing to do only with religion. It is also a history mm. of a, a real people and, exactly. and what they went through. And that's, that's good to emphasize that it is a journal. Yeah. Very much like how we write a journal in our everyday life. So, but something happened, right? Because all these prophets, mm -hmm. as uh, people writing in what we call the Bible today, in this yeah. journal, in this, and you're writing down their stories of what they experienced their life yeah. to be, and their trials, their beliefs, and revelations, and, and whatnot. Something happened over the years. Something changed in the Bible. Well, if 
Well, Christ came in the Bible. I think that would be a big game changer. That is a good, ch uh, that is a good uh, and a lot of things happen. So everything was a change that way. But something oh, also happened. I know, you, I know what you mean. Throughout yeah. the years, because <clears throat> it got translated, it got edited. It got edited and translated. And so certain yeah. gospel truths were you, more, more or less changed and taken out. Yeah. Lost, in a way. People thought, deemed, you know what, this, this part of the gospel, I don't think we need it anymore. Boom. Now we don't have that part anymore, yeah. or not in, not in the Bible record at least. No, and, and uh, we need to, a lot of times it sounds very negative what we're saying, but we need to remember a lot of times these people that changed it weren't sitting, oh, I'm going to change it because I'm evil. These are the things mm -hmm. that oft times happen with, with mankind when they, yeah. when they translate. Things get lost in translation. There's actually a movie about that, but anyways. Um, lost in translation. But it's true. I, I know. I've translated into a lot of different languages in the general conference in my younger mm -hmm. days, and it's very hard to, to get it to match. Uh, yeah. Up, just because languages are different. So, and so, that's only one aspect of what happened yeah, to the Bible. That's just one aspect. But the matter of fact is that we're sitting with a Bible that's got changed and things got lost over the years. And, and some man-made man opinions did enter into the Bible. Mm -hmm. in the, and, and if people had it's a only, different... It's only natural after so many years of having the yeah. Bible, not having a sure source of... Or where Google Translate or Google or Translate or... Yeah. or even just to Google the right, you know, say, what is the right answer for this, you know? But still, we hang on to one very important thing in the Bible that has not changed, uh, and that is that the Bible teaches us about Christ and that Christ is our Savior. And that truth is very important, and that is still very uh, clear in the Bible. Yeah, and that's, that's where I was... I jumped the gun and referred to earlier is yeah that it's like a journal with a th with a theme. Yeah. We talk about Christ and he's our savior. Everything kind of continues and mm. and they everything is centered about Christ in the Bible. Now, some people uh if you click in here are not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh which also we also called Mormons. Uh, you might go, wait a minute, I've just heard that you have a new Bible called the, uh, the Book of Mormon. Now we're going to come to that, but before we enter into that, yeah, I would like Bible. to share with you, we should share, we have 13 articles of faith who describes exactly what we believe in, in a very short way, of course. And number eight in the articles of faith actually describes exactly where we put the Bible and the Book of Mormon together. So let's read that one. Let us read this. It is Articles of Faith number eight. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far, it is, as far as it is translated correctly. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. Exactly. It can, that's how clear it can be, be said. Good. We believe in both of them. There we you go. Both of them. But as They're we said earlier, as far as it's correctly translated, because we recognize that things have been lost over the years. Now, that, that actually leads us into the Book of Mormon now a little bit. Now we talked a little bit about the Bible. The Bible. Let's talk about the Book of Mormon. What, is that, that a journal as well? It is very much like a journal. It's yeah. actually, I like to compare it. It's just like the Bible. Uh-huh. Except. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, the same, but just different. Just different. Well, the Bible took place, we can say, in the Middle East and the countries round about there. Mm -hmm. In Israel and over there, right? Book of Mormon took place more in, in the Central America, South America region, roughly around the same time point. So we're not quite. We're actually but talking about two different places. Two, totally two different places, yeah. almost roughly the same time point. Book of Mormon spans from 600 BC to mm -hmm. 400 AD, mm -hmm. and what is written in the Book of Mormon? I think you can almost it's answer this. It's a quest, <laughs> but it is people, prophets, disciples of Christ writing down their stories, their trials, their beliefs, revelations. and their revelations uh -huh. about Jesus Christ. The same theme is in the Book of Mormon. So we have the same actually going on. Now the interesting thing about the Book of Mormon, you said it takes place, and it does, on the totally other side of uh, the globe. Mm -hmm. But it starts. Where does it start? Oh, it actually starts in Jerusalem. Well, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that even more overlapping, you yeah. could say. Yes, it yeah. is, isn't it? Because yeah. it's actually happening under in Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, under King yeah. Zedekiah, yeah. I believe. In the beginning, and that's when it starts. And then they leave. And it's a very interesting yeah. story I as well. I hope people know their ancient uh, king's genealogy and chronology. Yeah. And everything. If king not, Zedekiah. you have something to study <laughs> in the Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah. that's very true. And again, the theme, Jesus Christ is our Savior. And that is mm -hmm. so amazing to me that two yeah. different books being written. Been, been, been written um, at the same time, more or less, 
Sam is staying. Sam so, I mean, and it, they obviously have people? communication with each other, yeah. right? They're not, you know, they're not sending pigeons over with letters. Well, it is interesting because they actually had the Old Testament. The people that we read about That's in the Book true. of Mormon had some of the the, the Old Testament, and it took some of the records with them. Yeah, uh, and they'll cite from it in the Book yeah. of Mormon. It's really interesting. So, it very much so, as the Articles of Faith states, that we believe in both of them as very important. One of them witnesses is a witness for the other, and vice versa. So, yeah. we're bit back to the Book of Mormon. Now, uh, as we said in the Bible, we actually have a record in the Bible, in the New Testament, that Jesus Christ walked the earth. Mm -hmm. And we read about his mission, his ministry, uh, whatever word we would like to use, uh, as he as he uh, lived his life here until his death and, and so forth, and how he uh, gave his... Um, uh, organized his church and had the apostles continue with that. Mm. Now, the Book of Mormon also talks about the ministry of Jesus Christ. It he does. also visited them. He also visited them. That's the that's the the climax, the crowning point in uh -huh. this in the Book of Mormon is when Christ Himself comes after visiting those in Jerusalem and Israel. He comes over to them in the Central America, South America region, to the inhabitants of the Book of Mormon, and. It's really spectacular because he gives the same, almost exact, more or less exactly the same sermons. You know, well, the, the gospel sermon is the, the same. The gospel is the same. The yeah. sermon of the mount comes he gives there, a similar just like in sermon Matthew on the 5. mount. Yeah. He calls disciples and apostles and sets up his church just as how he did it in in Jerusalem back over over there on the other side of the pond. Which makes sense because the gospel is the same, and it also makes sense. I think some people might it might freak them out and going, wait a minute, Christ goes to the other side of the world. Well, why not? Why not? We all have children, yeah. our, heaven, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ is the Savior for, for all of us. Initially, it's a weird thought. Say, wait, wait, wait. He went over there? Well, why not? Exactly yeah. like what you said. He, of course he would visit everyone as many. He probably visited even more. And if we ask ourselves this, what is the purpose of the Bible and what is the purpose of the Book of Mormon? And we're going to go to, directly to the Book of Mormon right now. Uh, what is the main purpose of the Book of Mormon? Because maybe that answers a little bit of our sometimes are going, uh, we just accept it or we just think it's a little bit weird, but maybe it's mm. not as weird. What well, is the main purpose? The purpose of the Book of Mormon helps us to get come to Christ. Yeah. The, whole, the whole fundament, the whole reason why it was written is to testify to people that Jesus is the Christ, He had visited these people and he, that He still lives. And that He still lives. And and, and about his power, his mission, and everything, exactly. But then it also does something else, doesn't it? Well, it does a lot of things, right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> but we're just going to mention some of them. It, beside the fact, and that not, I'm not saying that because the, the main purpose is of teaching us about uh, Jesus Christ and that, mm -hmm. that testament of having him, that he still lives and he is our Savior. But there's another testament that lies yeah, in there. It teaches the true doctrine of the atonement. Yes. Especially concerning the plan of salvation. Yes, and if you could get all of us unconfused about that one, go back to episode two, and then, yes, and, and look that up, because that's when we talk a little bit about the plan of salvation. But we're not going to cover that today. Not today. Not today. But, um, so, the, the testimony, we have some testimonies in the Book of Mormon that we actually can say we also can find in the Bible. Yeah, and that's... That's why we say that the, we believe in the Bible mm. and the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus, Jesus Christ because we already have one, but as everything else, we need more than one witness. Exactly, and you can't really complain that we have more teachings and more testimonies of Christ either. And they do support each other. They're not contradictory in any way. The Book of Mormon and the Bible support each other, and the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe, as we said earlier, in the Bible, as far as it's correctly uh, translated, and we believe in the Book of Mormon being the Word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's put down some ground rules right ground here. Ground rules. Some, some basic stuff here. So, we have the Bible that supports the Book of Mormon. Yeah, and vice versa, right? Book yeah, and the Book of Mormon supports yeah. the Bible. The Book of Mormon speaks of the ancient covenant that God made with His children. There's the one. Bible tells what? Of great prophets who had also received these covenants by faith. Okay. So we got some covenants going on. Yeah, we got some covenants. Uh, uh, the Book of Mormon testifies of Christ and His atonement. Yes, the Bible provides the account of His birth, ministry, death, atonement, and resurrection. So as you said just for two seconds ago, they really complement each other, don't they? We they're, can actually they're say they're best friends, hand in hand, all really the way. Best friends. They're the best teamwork ever because they talk about the same thing in each of their way of wording it, so to speak. 
So that's awesome. So far, so good. Uh, so now we've got some, some truth down. Uh, the Book of Mormon is not just for reading and then we close it and then it's done. Uh, no, the Book of Mormon can do more things than just read it. I mean, not just, but we can study it yeah. and we can read it. But it actually is, uh, there's actually more in, in, in it. The there are a lot of things in the Book yeah. of Mormon. There's a lot of, you know, just deep, wonderful truths that we get out of it. Mm -hmm. And we, time and time again, after we read it, we can... I mean, one of the things is, of course, as we know, uh, it doesn't have to be in the Book of Mormon or the Bible, but any ancient uh, scripture can help us understanding our own lives, actually. We exactly. don't have to necessarily do the same mistakes <laughs> as they did. We could learn from it, but, uh, but yet we, we still here. <laughs> we would like to think so. Yeah. Um, but uh, as it happens, sometimes we don't learn. And, but that's okay, because then yeah. we learn by, us, by our own living it, and um. then we can write our own stories. But there's something that's very interesting. That's yeah. like a very practical life we have. But then there's the, another kind of life that we also have. What's wow. that? You guys are the, the soul, our, life, our soul, our yeah, spiritual, spiritual life, life to yeah. understand the spiritual things. I'm, uh -huh. I'm guessing you want to go in we that direction. We have questions in our souls, don't we? Like Very we ask so. questions every day. I mean, I do. Not these necessarily questions that we're going to mention here. An example of, mm -hmm. because I, because we're sitting here because we have received a testimony that we have a heavenly Father. But we could have a question: Is there really a God? And sometimes, even in Wait. our lives, we can ask that. Even I'm, though I'm we sure know. that everyone asks themselves yeah. that question. And yeah. the Book of Mormon is a perfect, succinct example or a way to find out. It's a, all exactly. about stories of people finding out that there's a God, or how we can even find out that there's and a God. How and how, and what happens when, and, and it also yeah. tells us very exactly what to do when you find out that there is a God. Because it's, yeah. again, but that's something yeah. that we got to talk about later, because we're going to talk about, and not today, yeah, that'd be uh, another, another the, episode. Uh, the gospel principles, because it talks about the actions of what we do. But Exactly, when we have attained a faith in God. Yeah. But some of the questions, is there really a God? Did I exist before I was born? That's an interesting question, yeah. yeah. Will I live after I die? Yeah. yeah. What about, what do you have over there? I have, what is the purpose of life? Mm -hmm. And that's, these are, these are very <laughs> poignant, spur uh, Danish questions. Yeah, there we go. They are, they are, exactly, both in Danish and in English. <laughs> yeah. And is Jesus really the Savior? Yeah. I mean, these are very, these are very spiritual, deep questions that you know. These are hard to uh -huh. ask other people, right? They're they are, uh, and and at a certain point, even though we do ask other people, yeah. uh, we each are accountable for our own answer because we need to know for ourselves. Mm. We cannot just live on somebody else's uh, answer for these things. Exactly. Um, or there, are, there are also practical there questions are the practical that we can get, things, and that is, I, that's, I think that's really fun with the Book of Mormon uh -huh. is. Um, we have here, how can I find work? Yeah. How on earth oh, can scripture wait. help you do that? <laughs> yes, let's like, hear it. <laughs> I think a lot of people out there would actually like to hear, how can I find work through the Book of Mormon? <laughs> well, and that's, it's going to be different from case to case. The way I would answer that one is, it'll help us be follow the Holy Ghost to guide us in the right direction. So to find work. Every time we, we uh, engage ourselves in some kind of spiritual matter of, of good, of course, not any kind of spiritual mm -hmm. matter, but uh, from the Book of Mormon, it will increase our ability of receiving uh, guidance from, through the Holy Ghost. And it's true. How can I find work? What about, what kind of education should I choose? You, you might have really, you know, you might have done your own an, research, exactly. but, but it's hard at the end. And there's even... Yeah, and even in the Book of Mormon, you can read about certain values and things that are found in the Gospel, and that can help you choose an yeah. education that you like. And what about if we find we have friends? Um, what kind of friends should I make? Well, not only that, but how can I help my friend? You mm. know, I mean, it's not like sometimes uh, we we can ask our friend. I have some friends. And I actually have friends, and some of them are not in Good. America. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just want to say that. And some I of them are not. I have friends too. <laughs> they're they're not here. And, and that doesn't mean I don't know them because they're in Denmark. It just means that I'm not in touch, you know, like feeling their presence or things exactly. like that. So for me to help them, uh, and, and sometimes, even though I, I read on Facebook, of course, and I write them, it's just a little bit different. So sometimes, mm. uh, you know, I get some good ideas through the Book of Mormon, yeah. how to click into it, and I can, can of course, always mm -hmm. ask my Heavenly Father. So it's not because I just am totally lost and have no, no idea. But sometimes if we talk about help and, and, uh, and supporting other people, these are things of the heart, of the soul. 
and we could certainly use, I can use a little insight from my Heavenly Father of how to to kind of channel my efforts. Exactly. In, in, so they, they have a better mm. effect on my friends. And it really helps us to find any way to serve others. That's yeah. a good theme in the Book of and, Mormon. And uh, actually everything that's written there, as we said, mm. was about uh, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So. In other words, the gospel of Jesus Christ will answer all our questions. And that's incredible. That's an incredible <laughs> statement. It's like, whoa, yes. whoa, what are you coming with yes. over here? Because just that claim. <laughs> what are you coming with <laughs> over here? Yeah. No, well, I didn't plan that, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> well, reading, then you could say then the Book of Mormon, which is, you know, contains the fullness of the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. The Book of Mormon can literally and figuratively answer all your yeah. questions that you will ever have. And It'll give you the direction yeah. that you need in your life. And I'm thinking sometimes, you know, we say, well, that's just easy for us to throw out. Who hasn't thrown that out? A lot of people say parents do it all the time. I can answer your questions, child. Well, that sounds, we're, we're now we're sounding a little bit like a politician promising so yeah. many things, but, but it's true. But we're not promising it because we have the strength to answer your questions. We're promising it because we know, because we've done it and been there and do it every single day. Mm -hmm. And we are going to share with you right now how to use the Book of Mormon so you, too, even if you are a member and have forgotten or just being strengthened in your testimony or if you're not a member of the church, that how it can work for you. It's the same principle and it goes for everybody. It's applicable nowhere, yeah. no matter what you believe why? in. Because we are children of our Heavenly Father. Yeah. But it does take something and let's go through it because we can actually read it. It's called the promise. It's a promise that a prophet mm -hmm. uh, Moroni in the Book of Mormon gave to every one of us. It's actually a quite beautiful story, so even if you don't want to read the entire Book of Mormon, go to the last part and read this. All right. Where can we find it? In Moroni chapter 10, verses 3 to 5, and that's actually what we call in, in inside terminology, the promise. The so, promise. <laughs> yes, and Moroni, like she, like Taya said, is the last book in the Book of yeah. Mormon, so it's even easier to find. The last yeah. chapter, the last book. Yeah. It's really worth actually to read the entire chapter and gives you an idea of how it ends and, and everything mm -hmm. and, and the, what, what goes on at that time. So let's read it. Do yeah, you have I it? have it here. Yeah. Um, it begins, Behold, and it's Moroni that is speaking to us. He was a prophet. I would exhort you that when ye shall read these things and ponder them in your hearts, and when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye should, ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ. If these things are not true, and if you shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, He will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And here's the kicker. And by the power... That wasn't in there. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you may know the truth of all things. Yes. So let's, let's, let's go through it a little bit. That's a very, very strong uh, scripture. And I'm thinking, if you know it already, you're thinking, oh, I know this. But if you haven't just read it lately or have forgotten about it or even you haven't never heard it before let's go or through and say deeper into it. what what in in verse 3 what are we actually what do they actually say when, it, what do we have to do we have to do it's what a is plan a plan of well, action yeah, isn't it exactly and it's very logical read the book of mormon mm -hmm. you can't come you know if you, we can't utilize all the purpose of the book of mormon without actually reading it but if we're talking about a person sitting out there going well now I've read the Book of Mormon, I also have problems with my education. Then you can apply it to that and say, you need to study your education. You need to study uh, a little bit about yourself and before you enter into this. This means actually to prepare. Mm -hmm. There's a pre preparation. <laughs> exactly. And that, that part of it would be pondering. We, we call it yeah. pondering. That would be kind of studying, yeah. thinking, yeah. figuring it out. So figuring a little bit out in your hearts, do some some uh, some homework per se before. Just as Moroni said, yeah. ponder it in your heart. Yeah, and so then what happens? Well, Moroni asks us to ask God. So that would mean after we had pondered, or we have we are pondering, we go to God and we pray to Him, we ask Him about the things we've been pondering about, or as he says here, ask about the Book of Mormon, yeah. if it's true or not. But, as we said, this applies to everything. So it's not just you can only ask about the Book of Mormon for the rest of your life. If it's true, you can actually ask about other things as well and get mm -hmm. guidance through that. Now, that's very interesting because I'm thinking that the logic of it, if we really need to know if we have a Heavenly Father, first of all, mm -hmm. why not go ask directly to the source? Go to the source, always go to the source. We can ask a lot of other people, and mm -hmm. that's good as well, to get support and, and guidance. Yeah. But you need to know for yourself. And no better place than go, go to, to the, the source. source. <laughs> okay, 
So we're right now, we're asking in the name of Christ if these things are true. And we should remember to do ask in with what? What do we need to have? Well, we're not going to go up and be like, hey, is this true? Uh, I don't, then it's yeah. not like I care. And it's not, yeah, and probably and also. So we have to be sincere about it. Mm -hmm. We have to we have really, to. we have to put some meat behind our words. We have to mean that. What we, yes. What we, and I, when I say that, I mean when we ask, that means the answer we get, we act upon it. If it's no, we do that. If it's yes, we follow that. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean the sincere heart. A sincere heart means that we really want to know. That's true. That's yeah. True. But it's true what you're saying. We all, and then a real intent of faith. Man, that's going to... I'm thinking, wow. What does that even mean? Is that, is that well, it acting means, on the answer? Well, it, it, it means that we're believing that we will receive an answer. Oh, yeah, that, that yeah. we have faith that, you know, there is someone on the other end yes. listening to us. It's not a one-way street here, oh, okay. you know. And, uh, and then also having faith that he will manifest this truth unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And if we're ever in doubt of what the Holy Ghost is, let's just remind you what it says in verse 5. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. Yes. It's the Holy Ghost. It is part of the Godhead. It is... The, the way we feel and get confirmation that something is right or wrong even. Yeah. Um, Guidance through that. So there's actually a really nice pattern right here to how we can really benefit mm -hmm. uh, in our lives, whether or not it is about the truth of the Bible and the Mor Book of Mormon, but, but this is the promise that we found, find in the Book of Mormon. Exactly. So um, that is very, very important. Uh, and this is, this is that promise that you know, any if you run into a Mormon or any member of the church, they will say this to you. We, it's ingrained into us. We try to live this all the time, and it's yeah. it's something that we can always try to fine tune and practice because it is. I don't know if I'd call it an art, but being well, able to be so in tune with God, on. being having that sincere heart and having that real intent of faith, it is difficult to keep up. Yeah, we we're not saying we always have the real intent of faith and sincere heart. Uh, because we're people just like everyone else, but we are saying that any member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have re received their own testimony by using this promise, by praying for themselves, if this is in fact the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is built upon, just mm. like what we read in Matthew 16 when Christ uh, talks to Peter, and Peter says, I know that you are uh, Christ, uh, the Son of God, and Jesus responds, um, this is not word by word, this is as far as I remember it in English, that, uh, that on this rock I will build my church, because no man has revealed that truth to you. No, in fact, no man had other than the Holy Ghost. And that is the rock, the testimony that we receive from the Holy Ghost of this church is built upon today. Mm -hmm. So every member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are striving, like everyone else, to do the will of the Lord and striving to try and obey mm -hmm. and, and do good mm -hmm. and follow the example of Christ, we have all followed this promise and not just one yeah. time all the time in our all lives. the time we try to yeah we're not perfect but we try because we have felt it we it's know convenient. it to be true <laughs> it's convenient to have something to rely on like that yes um, so we we ask you please remember the promise even if you already know it practice it again and if you don't try it mm -hmm. You do have a heavenly, we do have a heavenly father that loves us and he will answer our prayers. He will answer and that's the cool thing. It's not just a one-way communication. He's on the other end of that cup string. Yeah, he's just waiting. Yeah. He's just waiting. So that was our episode for today, episode yeah. four, and we will return after Thanksgiving, of course, with episode five. Yes, it's amazing how that goes, isn't it? Exactly. And <laughs> well, I think we should give him a little challenge, a little, yes, a little assignment. Yes, I like it. Obviously, we, we think that you should try this, like Tia said, try the praying and asking God. But why not try, between now and next week, next episode, tell someone about this show. Tell them, yes. show it to them. Do it. Member or non-member. And now we say bye. Hi-hi.